story, there was a grenade in the airstrip in Poptap, and there were four children. One of the children picked up the grenade, and uh, one child died that was 12 years old from the grenade, and there are three other children here that we're looking at. They're ages 10, 11, and 12. Oh my god, this was so huge. Poor baby, I'm so sorry, kiddo. Yeah. I just, he's laying in blood and I hate We're treating him. little kids that just watch their friend, you know, get blown to pieces out in the field. Typhoid fever, tetanus, cerebral malaria, two cases of brucellus, a one and a half kilo premature baby. We looked at the mother and she was almost as malnourished as the child. I sure wish this little one had bounced back. I know it. I think she's seizing. Yeah, it looks like it. I think it. she's seizing. We need diazepam. Diazepam? Diazepam. Okay. Nelson, the baby's seizing again. We need injectable Hi, baby. diazepam. Where do you? Yeah. Like five milligrams? It's in Paul's room? Okay. Paul, we need diazepam, five milligrams. You put it in her axillary, yeah. Everything's so dark. Yeah, I can't believe you guys work in the dark. So it's 90 degrees in this room. Yeah, yeah, it's not good for bringing temperature down. Where could, is there another room that's cooler? The child has a temperature of 104 axillary, and we did the malaria test, and it's positive. We have to get this fever down. Can you explain to the parents what, what's going on so they're not so scared? <laughs> She's getting worse even though we gave Tylenol twice, so we really have to be aggressive. So just keep fanning her and more bathing. Bathing, 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 okay? okay. It will save her life and prevent brain damage. If she seizes, she can have brain damage, so we don't want that, okay? She, she'd she been doing okay for a little while, and then, and then things turned, and, and she was, you know, we estimate probably about an hour from dying. More water, more water, get her wet. <laughs> more, more. Yeah, gracias. <laughs> That's right, yes, yes. Yeah, good, yeah, that's good. In the armpits, yeah. And in the back of her neck and on her forehead, yeah. The malaria had, had gone to her, her brain. She had cerebral malaria. She'd been seizing. We'd been giving her more and more sedatives to try and calm seizures, but she'd been uh, continually seizing. And she still had a high fever. What is her name? Yeah. It's called Ayak. Ayak. Bring her on the Ayak? Board. Hey, Ayak. Hey, yuck. We have to get the fever down so she won't seize again. She seized just a little while ago again, and I'm, I'm having a hard time assessing if she thinks she's still seizing. Her temp has come down from 39.1 a few minutes ago down to 30... 38.8. 38.8. There, now, is that seizing? I think that's seizing. Yeah. I want to give her phenobarb. Phenobarb? I thought you said you had it. Yesterday you said you had it. In the locked up. Heidi's book says don't give phenobarb for seizures of cerebral malaria. Phenobarb can't be used. Phenobarb says should not be used to treat the seizures associated with cerebral malaria. <laughs> okay. But, you know, when you're up against a rock in a hard place. Does it say why? Nope, just Because it's the only thing else we've got. All righty, so we don't have anything to help the cerebral malaria baby either. <laughs> We're trying. What other seizure drugs does he have? Well, we can keep pushing Valium. Can you get a blood pressure on her? Do we have a PD cuff? No. Or can you give her, can you have two IVs in at once and just? We need a Y connector. Yeah. We don't have it. We've sent clindamycin before. Oh, clindamycin? Yeah. No, we never been here. Well, you guys said it was too expensive. We never got it. We, we had to limit what we could bring because, uh, you know, the planes are single engine planes. There's only so much cargo we can bring. You know, we ourselves are starting to, to prepare for, for the worst case scenario.
nice to cool her down. She's got a fever of about 38.8, and we're trying, she's having seizures, which is common in kids that have a fever, so trying to cool her down. Right. I was putting it in her groin. Yeah, that's yeah. where I'm going as well. It was 108 degrees out in the shade today, and with this girl with 104 temperature, we had to get her cooler, and there wasn't much cold air to blow around on her. You know what, if somebody gets some more batteries, I had this little fan, and yeah. I was, I just need batteries for it. I already used the it. There's the fan. Batteries, it double A's, and I've got some in my tent if you don't. In the far, yeah. if you go in my tent to the far left in the way corner of my tent, okay. there's more, double, there's a lot of double A's. Double A's. Okay. In like a hard plastic zip thing. Okay. Clear. Yeah. It was very, very scary there. At one point I looked to the other doctor and asked him when was the last death he had in the clinic. And uh, he said this was the worst case he's ever seen of cerebral malaria. It was very scary. It was very touch and go because we didn't have an ICU. We didn't have all our tools, but we had a lot of people and everybody that's here was in the room and we were all thinking together and, and working on helping her. and. So it was wonderful teamwork, and, and I think we really did make do the best we could. When somebody's this severe, do you usually switch to cordum, or do you continue yeah. with IV? Yeah, we, when we don't see any improvement after 48 hours or 24 hours, we, we just switch. Do you ever add doxycycline or clindamycin? No. So Dan's book says we should still be doing quinine. Yeah, my book didn't say that. Take the pick. <laughs> I, I just looked up another book that says quinine's gluconate. But this quinine. is saying quinidine, yeah. like the antiarrhythmic. This is saying quinine. Quinine, quinine and quinidine are different. are different drugs, yeah. But this is quinine we're talking about here. Are they talking about continuing to use... I think for cerebral malaria, you need quinine. You use quinine, yeah, 100%. I don't, I, don't, I don't think she should have been put on... She should have been given additional medication. Yeah. I, when we give quinine IV, they were, they were not responding or they were not improving. But she did get better yesterday. Like, this is worse than she was yesterday. This is worse than yesterday? Yeah. This is much worse than yesterday. Yeah. On the quartz. Yeah, yes, yesterday she was controlled with five of diazepam. Mm -hmm. but five isn't c controlling it now. Okay. So but I think she's getting worse. She's I, actually today she's getting worse, but like yesterday I don't know. And she was just switched. So I mean I think she needs to be on quinine plus like doxy. Okay. I realize that doxy isn't great for kids, but right now like to hell with her. But her has she dental had, health. She's had quinine. Yeah, she had quinine for she twenty-four had three hours. of it. Yeah. And then they switch her to quartum. Did yeah. she have quinine for 24 hours? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then try something different then. Try quinine and doxy. Why not? What, what tabs do we have for doxy? Do we have like 100? 100, 100 milligrams. 100? Well, how long has she been on the quartum now? Huh? How long has she been on the quartum now? Uh, we gave the first do one tablet yesterday. I don't know whether this morning she he was given. You can inquire from Paula there. We have to get this fever down. So we're not making any progress with the fever. Four hours of quinine mm -hmm. yesterday and got got better, but then got worse. Mm -hmm. So you guys switched her to coartum to the NG. Right. Okay. So we might need to do some kind of combo. I think Dan's right. Add in doxy plus quinine. Starting on quinine again. Doxy four. Well, this is they're talking about adjunctive. It wouldn't hurt to do the quinine. Yeah. Yeah. We have doxy. Yeah. So we only we need something injectable. So we don't. I don't think we have doxy, doxy injectable. But they're doing that on YouTube though. Doxy. Yeah, but it'll be so slow. You don't even know where guts working. If we got clean to IV, yeah, that's better. I don't think if you change to quartum, you can change back to quinine again. No, you can't change. Yeah, I think I've heard that. Yeah. Why is that? Because yeah. our books kept saying different things. Yeah. Did you have a second run? The, I pulled up the document. From WHO, WHO yeah, for this. malaria? Yeah. You're good, Dan. Quinine. So they're talking about continuing for at least three days and then right. shift to ASA. Like the oral. Okay. Can you Google and see if there's something about not going backwards from coartum to quinine? Severe malaria, but this is, this is severe. severe so we'll keep going down. Let me see what else. Okay. Including quinine. There you go. There's our answer. So we can go back to quinine. Hold on. Let's just read that first Hold sentence on. right there. 130, right? Hold on. Let's drop 130 of quinine. 
It says there's no interaction, and it said to do it for at least three days uh, hold on. for severe malaria with the quinine. Okay, so 1 a.m. was the last dose. So we're just a little behind. Okay, so we're going to go with quinine 130. And we're going to DC this, so we're fixing that. What glutes do we have that has um, dextrose in it? This doesn't have glucose in it, though. No, because I was looking for something with glucose before. There's yeah. no yeah. arrows. No glucose. No, this, this is half-strength there. I already half looked for this, Dan. The only thing that came up was D5. But you know what? He could, in, he could make... Yeah, he could inject not. dextrose into yeah, Dara's yeah. Do we have, to make D5 normal. Do we have concentrated dextrose? Yeah, we have, we have D50. Okay, then we'll, do, then we'll do that. Nelson, okay. can you do the arithmetic on that? So just say 55 cc's of the, the D50 into... We're, just, we're gonna put 55 cc's of the 50% dextrose into a half a liter of normal saline because that will dilute the, the dextrose by 10%, giving us 5% dextrose in normal saline. That way we can give isotonic solution and continue to give glucose, so we'll prevent the hypoglycemia and, and we'll be good about rehydrating. Normal saline is in the, the okay, let me get that. The temp's going up again? Yeah, let's, where's that cold water? Let's keep doing it. All right, so we're gonna get, um, we're gonna get 55 cc's of the 50% dextrose and inject it into that, and then that's how we're gonna give the quinine from now on. Yeah, that's a good solution, Dan. <laughs> He's a good thinker. We gotta turn her around. I'm invested in this. Okay, we're gonna have a little blood spillage here. That's all right. She just seized again. Try a temp again, Heidi. Yeah. Heidi, you, try a temp again. I just want to see if we're making any difference. She's frothing, it's making me think she's seasoned. I would like to suction, just keep suction on her. Because she does have that froth in her mouth. Like, and I don't, I can't tell. I don't think she's seasoned because, like, she does, like, respond to me. Like, if I, but her jaw is so clenched tight. Yeah, but that can it's, happen with seizures. Yeah, exactly. But so then, like, she'll release. Well, she was. We don't have any oxygen to give her. We didn't have any way to put a tube down if she were to stop breathing. We had to decide between stopping a seizure and worrying about her respirations. Oh, just so many things we're missing. Just all the little specimen cups, just everything that we touch. We don't have enough gloves, everything. You know the arithmetic for that. Figure the arithmetic yeah. of you've got 500 mLs let's, let's say, and you want it to be 5%. Yeah. Well, so this is 50, so it has to be diluted. So this would be like 10 no, of this. No, you can take a volume of 50 and put it into That's pure saline. Yeah. How much of this do you yeah. put in? That's what I'm saying.
My nine's infusing. Jack, what do you think? Cool her down and see before you throw anything more at her? Sometimes it's hard to do less. You know what I mean? But yeah. I don't get, well, I don't understand. I know she's like, people see it pretty high, high, high. I know. Ayak, Ayak, are you awake? I like her moaning. That's better. Ayak. So she's come down a little bit. Keep going. Heidi, she just peed. Yeah! <laughs> Peeing is good! Peeing is good! You like me? Peeing is good. Peeing is great! Good, yeah, she seems more responsive. Oh, let's see. I know it. Our little pee is a wonderful thing. I think we... We're a good team. I think we... But I think... She urinated and she's called out for her brother. Amen. Just about to recheck her temp. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's beautiful. Nobody will ever have malaria in this family ever again. <laughs> the net distribution, the deworming, and the vitamin A distribution, uh, it, it marks a change in paradigm where we're now trying to prevent illness. Now that we've grown, we have better staffing, and we, we have more funds from donors, we're better able to not only treat the acute illness, but try and prevent illness. We will distribute 600 nets. Okay. We just want to make sure that the, the vulnerable people get them first. Oh, okay. That's... Okay, fine. So right now, let's go. We, yes. We go now. This is a mosquito net. Mosquitoes cause malaria. And if you make sure your brothers and sisters and the rest of your family members use it correctly, you can save their lives. So start protecting you and your children by using the net correctly tonight and forever into the future. <laughs>